this is pretty intense. Hey guys, it's Minty here, and today we are going to go underground into the sewers of Derry and investigate the monstrous entity that is Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Fictional character created by horror mastermind Stephen King and performed memorably by Tim Curry. A monstrous beast creature who lives in the sewers, living on a diet of the poor helpless children of Derry, a frightening child killer and sworn enemy of the Losers Club. A being so evil, he lures his helpless prey by taking on the guise of a clown, making this famous fictional monster that bit more creepy. I mean, think about it. We have a monstrous creature who lives in the sewers, whom eats children while disguising himself as a clown. That is a recipe for instant nightmares right there. Pennywise loves nothing better than terrorising his poor helpless victims while going on about how shit floats. Oh yes. They float. They float. While also making funny jokes. <laughs> but do we know all that there is to be known about this mysterious being? Whether your introduction to Pennywise was through the original 1986 book, It, or watching him devour poor Georgie in the 1990 IT miniseries. Or even if it's going to be the 2017 cinematic version. One thing you can't deny is that Pennywise has become one of the greatest boogeymen in pop culture, right up there with Freddy and Jason. One thing you have to admit is that Pennywise is a pretty mysterious character. I feel like there is so much more about him to discover. Like, who exactly or what exactly he is and where does he come from? So today we are going to dive into the legend of IT and see if we can find any clues along the way about this mysterious terror as we look into 10 things you may not know about Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Kiss me fat boy! Number 10, Pennywise is an alien. In the TV miniseries of It, all we know is that Pennywise is a shape-shifting being whose real form turns out to be a giant spider. No doubt disappointing many viewers back in 1990, especially after such a big build-up, learning that this creature is... a spider. But the book is much more complex about Pennywise's physicalities. It is explained that Pennywise existed long before the Big Bang, in another dimension outside the boundaries of space, known as the Macroverse. Pennywise crash landed on Earth millions of years ago in order to feed, and after a long state of hibernation, he awoke in 1715. And thus from then on, he wakes up every 30 years after a long sleep to cause as much chaos as humanly possible. <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all! In the book, people do see Pennywise as a spider, but that's not his true form, as his true form cannot be comprehended by the human mind. So thus the reason people see him as a spider is because their minds are trying to scramble the image of what they are seeing together and to make physical sense out of it. <sighs> okay, mind blown. That is a lot more complex than having him turn out to be nothing more than just a giant spider. Number nine, the mysterious deadlights. Explaining Pennywise's physicality is no easy task, as to further explain his existence, we next have to look into the mystery of the Deadlights. As mentioned, Pennywise's physical form cannot exist or be seen properly in our dimensional realm. You'll never see me. 
You'll see only what your little mind can allow. The realm where Pennywise comes from is called the Deadlights, which is a dimension that doesn't consist of physical existence, but instead is described as being an endless reality consisting of glowing orange lights. Staring into the Deadlights will drive any human insane. In the book, the character of Bill catches a glimpse of the Deadlights while staring into Pennywise's eyes, of which he describes an endless creature consisting of orange lights. In the TV movie, we see that the Deadlights can be seen through Pennywise's torso, which, just like the book, if stared into too long, can take away one's sanity. Number 8. Pennywise has multiple names. We already know Pennywise's two main names. Those being Pennywise, which he refers to himself when he is in his clown form, and the name given to him by the Losers Club, It. But in the novel, Pennywise had a variety of names, in which Pennywise is also referred to the Eater of Worlds, along with the title of Consumption and the Dairy Disease. Pennywise himself explains that his real name is Robert Gray, and even has the nickname Bob. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just find that to be so funny. Yeah, Pennywise doesn't seem all that freaky now, knowing that his name is Bob. <laughs> Personally, I like to think Pennywise doesn't even have a real name. Number seven, Pennywise's influences. Now it's time to look behind the scenes, as Stephen King explains that he drew inspiration for his Pennywise creation from three sources, those being Bozo the Clown, a famous US clown from the 1960s, which I really can't help but feel like they based the movie version's look on, along with Clarabelle, a clown which appeared on children's TV show Howdy Doody, which ran from the 40s to the 60s, and of course, Ronald McDonald, which is no surprise, as for many years now, fans have been making connections between Ronald McDonald and Pennywise, as Ronald is also a clown that's trying to lure kids into something that's no good for their health. But regardless, it seems that King had some pretty freaky clowns in mind when he was penning the character of Pennywise. Because you were one of the first people to have the idea that a clown could be a scary figure. You know, Kids are all terrified of him, and the parents are all like, aren't the clowns funny, Johnny? And then Johnny's like, no, get me the hell out of here! These people are all crazy! Because right. they are monstrous looking, and children are really afraid of them. They do have that sort of monstrous thing going for them. Number six, Pennywise's variety of designs. In recent years, more and more pictures have surfaced from behind the scenes of the production of the 1990 TV movie of It. And what I find fascinating the most is the concept designs for Pennywise, as apparently it took a lot of trial and error getting the look just right, to be both alluring and terrifying at the same time. At one stage it was considered making Pennywise a decaying zombie-like clown, which would have been interesting, but then they went with a more subtle approach. This picture I find interesting because Tim Curry in no way looks threatening. He generally looks like a nice friendly clown who just wants to entertain us. I'm glad they didn't go with this and instead went with this, because I just don't think the other design would have been as effective. Also, according to the DVD audio commentary by the cast and director Tommy Lee Wallace, Pennywise's crazy red clown hair was apparently Tim Curry's real hair. I get great joy out of the behind the scenes pictures, as it gives you an insight into what making the movie was actually like. I like this picture of Curry just chillaxing on the veranda. He oddly looks really lonely and this one of him smoking away. And then there's this one of him with the kids from the film, holding up a mad magazine. But I don't know, there's just something about this picture that doesn't sit right with me. I mean, who just holds a mad magazine like that? It just doesn't look natural. See? Even the remake had its own failed attempts with Pennywise, as a few years ago, before the remake went into production, these test designs were released, 
But I don't know, they just don't do it for me. It's like they were trying too hard to be scary, as Pennywise is meant to allure kids because he's dressed up like a clown. What kid in their right of mind would want to go to this? If the final Tim Curry design is anything to go by, sometimes less is more effective. Number 5. Pennywise's Other Appearances Yep, that's right. Pennywise hasn't just appeared in the story of It, but he has in fact transcended into other Stephen King tales. And King has even hinted in books that have followed it that Pennywise indeed is not dead. For example, in the Tommyknockers, a character claims to see a clown in a storm drain while passing through Derry. And speaking of Tommyknockers, the live-action TV miniseries version of that story acts as kind of a spin-off to the IT TV movie, as the fictional town Derry is referenced several times. Heck, even the miniseries VHS cover looks very similar to the poster artwork used for IT. Furthermore, in the novel Dreamcatcher, it is explained that there is some graffiti spray-painted on a wall reading, Pennywise Lives. In the Grey Matter, we learn about a character who worked in the sewers in Bangor, and one day came out of the sewers looking like he had just seen a ghost with all his hair now white. Something that we know can happen to people when they see it in his spider form. And finally, we then get Insomnia, which, like Dreamcatcher, also takes place in its fictional town of Derry. So could it be that over the years, King has been teasing us and giving us clues that maybe one day Pennywise might just return? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Number four, Pennywise's string of scary superpowers. That's right, in the novel we learn in great detail about many of Pennywise's abnormal abilities, of which he could almost be a superhero villain in a comic book. Pennywise's many superpowers include shape-shifting, creating illusions so powerful they can actually harm their victims, regeneration, partial invisibility, meaning only those whom are aware of his existence can see him, telepathy, teleportation, telekinesis, brainwashing, and mind control, and he can also control the weather and make plants die by touching them. In other words, Pennywise is an evil interdimensional entity you don't want to be crossing paths with anytime soon. Very wise of your dad, George. You very wise indeed. Number three, the actors who are nearly Pennywise. When it comes to the 1990 It miniseries, it really is hard to imagine anyone else but the legendary Tim Curry in the role. Get your pick. A bird. A bird. Billy boy. As many fans agree that Curry totally makes the series that bit more awesome. But before Curry landed the role, there were other actors considered for the now iconic part, including Alice Cooper, who definitely would have been an interesting choice, along with legendary British actor Malcolm McDowell, best known for his role in A Clockwork Orange, along with Roddy McDowell, best known for the original Planet of the Apes and Fright Night. But thankfully, Curry, who at the time was best known for his role as Dr. Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, came along and the rest was history. In a 1990 interview, Curry actually stated that he's really not into the horror movie genre. The irony being his portrayal of Pennywise has gone down in history as one of the most celebrated horror movie villains ever. But Curry has also gone on to say that he really likes Stephen King's book, The Shining, and would have loved to have starred in that. Oh my god, just imagine Tim Curry as Jack Torrance in The Shining. Yeah, I can totally see that happening. Not to be outdone by the miniseries, even the 2017 theatrical movie has its own issues with casting the scary clown-like child killer. Where early in the movie's production, young British star Will Poulter, or as I know him as, Eyebrow Kid, was cast as Pennywise. Which I must admit, was a very strange choice to say the least. I mean, yeah, okay, I can see him as one of the kids from the Losers Club, but Pennywise? Uh, I'm just not seeing it. But due to scheduling conflicts, 
Polter and his epic eyebrows had to step down from the role, leaving Swedish actor Bill Skarsgård taking on the role. And is it just me, or does he kind of look like a younger version of Tim Curry? Hmm. Number two, Pennywise doesn't just disguise himself as a clown. The image of Pennywise as a clown has become so iconic to the point where when some people even think of scary clowns, the first thing that pops into the head may very well be that of Pennywise. However, in the novel, Pennywise, or rather it, had a large range of disguises to trick and fool and terrorise his victims with. From disguising himself as his victim's family and loved ones, to even famous movie monsters. It seems the sky's the limit with the terror Pennywise can inflict on people. This was touched on briefly in the movie, but not utilised too much, probably due to copyright issues. As in the movie, we do see Pennywise transform into a werewolf, a mummy, and one of the children's abusive father. But in the book, there was a long list of disguises, including the creature from the Black Lagoon, a giant bird, the werewolf from I Was a Teenage Werewolf, as seen in the miniseries, a homeless man with leprosy, a swarm of flying leeches, a swarm of piranhas, the mummy, once again, that was seen in the miniseries, the shark from Jaws, oh my god, just imagine if that was Pennywise's main disguise, now that would have been an interesting film. Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, a Doberman Pinscher, and the witch from Hansel and Gretel. Wow, when you think about it, Pennywise just might be the greatest cosplayer of all time. Number one, Pennywise's arch nemesis is a turtle. Well, yeah, that's right. As odd as it sounds, Pennywise's ultimate foe, other than the Losers Club, is a turtle. Completely removed from the TV miniseries altogether, the Turtle of Life is an ancient powerful being from the same universe as Pennywise, the Macroverse, and is even suggested that the Turtle also created our universe. And unlike Pennywise, who is malevolent and evil, the Turtle of Life is kinder and wiser, almost suggesting he is the good half of Pennywise's evil, and that the two are in an eternal battle of creation versus consumption. Like Pennywise, the Turtle also appears in other Stephen King stories, including The Dark Tower. It's not hard to see why the Turtle of Life would be omitted from the TV series, as it is a confusing concept, in an already confusing story, which already would have been really hard to have adapted for a screen version. But regardless, I really like the idea of there being a powerful being like Pennywise, who is the solar opposite, the good version, as it creates a yin and yang out of the mythology of Pennywise. Either way, in this epic battle between interdimensional godlike beings, you want to make sure you're on the side of the turtle. Anyway guys, that was my list of things that you may not know about Pennywise, otherwise known as Bob. As always, I hope you have enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. I think that Pennywise will continue to be one of the most celebrated horror icons in pop culture and that the image of Tim Curry in clown makeup is just as terrifying and as fresh now as it was back in 1990. Anyway, I'm Minty and Apparently, they all float. I know this because Bob told me. Uh, see ya. <laughs>